Join me today at the quarry in Chelsea, Essex, and it's a lake that I fished loads as a young lad. A big lake, a weedy lake, and a reasonably difficult lake for a young lad. And uh, much of what I learned then has probably shaped me as an angler today. We're going to talk today about long range fishing and looking at that island as such. It's from the road bank, I think it's roughly 110 yards, and from here, roughly 120 yards. And to fish at that range as a young lad, you know, with 15 pound mono, 20 mil boilies on the end, yeah, it, was a, it was a big chuck, you know, and since then, obviously, I've progressed and I've learned how to cast long distances, much further distances, but today I'm going to show you how to do it more easily, all the tricks, all the techniques, and all the, the tackle you need to be able to fish at 120 yards, do it comfortably. I'm going to show you a marker float that's really aerodynamic, cast really well, the braid for the marker rods, you know, again, really fine, cast beautifully, and the tapered main line, you know, that gets you around the leader bands that on many waters restrict how far you can cast and uh, makes it just that much easier to fish at long range. First thing we're going to talk about is long range plumbing, how to find spots at long range and the equipment I use to do so. First of all, got the new SLR long range float, stands for super long range, long, thin, aerodynamic, with a dark flight on the top, flies like an absolute dream. But I don't use that immediately. The first thing I do when I'm trying to find a spot at long range is I plumb with a bare lead. This is a probe lead and I try and always use a really heavy lead, you know, heavier lead transmits more feel up the line and I'm able to find smaller clear spots. Um, I'm able to feel what's going on better when using a heavy lead. To cast a four ounce lead, really long range like we are today, you're looking for a rod of four and a quarter, four and a half pound test curve. I'm using the longbow from Daiwa and it's the marker spod rod so it can be used for spotting, can be used for, for your marker rod. When choosing a line for your marker setup, there's certain things that you want to consider. First of all, you want zero stretch and braid offers that but you need to pick the right type of braid. You don't want sinking braid. Sinking braid is generally quite thick and doesn't cast very well. So for your marker setup, you want a floating braid, has zero stretch. And what that allows you to do is cast really long range, feel the bottom, and should you pick up any weed, you know, which is muffling the sensation that's being transmitted up the line, with that zero stretch, you can shake it off, get that weed back off of the lead, and then you can continue to plump. Obviously, I'm using the Corda marker braid. It's really fine, really supple low friction through the rings, flies out there an absolute dream. Coupled to that is I add the 50 pound armor cord leader. Not only does it give me a bit more security when generating lots of power in big heavy casts, but it also enables the float to pop up much easier. So find the spot with the bare lead, the probe marker lead. Once you've got that all clipped up, and then attach the marker float and find out exactly how deep it is. So here's my marker float set up. First things first, cut the lead off and then I'll thread on the boom section from the adjustable zigrig kit. And that just allows for any sort of minimal weed to not prevent the float from popping up. Next from there, I've got a cut down heli sleeve. You know, it's meant for a helicopter rig, but if you just cut that in half and then tie the braid to your marker float onto the swivel, this little rubber then just perfectly covers that over and then it all knits together just like that. So we've talked about the tackle, now we're going to talk about the technique to fish at long range. And uh, there's a few things that you should be thinking about when trying to make a long cast. One is your foot position and weight transfer. You're starting with your weight on the back foot and then you're moving it onto the front foot. And you're doing that by having your arms above your head, leaning back, and then as you go onto the front foot, that's the moment when the left hand comes in, it draws the bottom of the rod into your chest and brings the cast round. So it's weight transfer, arms above your head, and try and keep the rod as straight as possible when you make the cast, you know. If you come across sideways like that and you let go too early, it's like a slice like in golf. And if you let go too late, it becomes like a hook. If you keep that rod completely straight as it comes over your head, the lead will fly true no matter what point you let go at. Oh, look at that, spot on. Obviously I've done all the plumbing with the bare lead. I know that's exactly right, it's on the gravel. It's just a case of popping that up 
and that'll give me a visual marker to then put my fishing rods to to make sure that I'm clipped at exactly the right range. Well, there you have it. There's my tips for fishing and marking at long range. I'm sure if you apply them to your own fishing, it'll help you find brilliant spots that you'll certainly catch fish off.